Hey guys, how's it going? We're going to be making a animated publication today in Cinema 4D, so let's just jump straight into it. We're going to go to Cube, and we are going to be changing the object properties of this cube. So we want them the same size, roughly, of a A4 piece of paper, which is 210 by, let's say, 1 centimeter for now, by 297 centimeters. Um, to be making this publication, we're going to get some flexing in there going, so we're going to be using some Mo splines. So we're going to have our cube selected, we're going to go down to the Modifiers tab, and hold down Shift, and drop a spline wrap in. That's going to child that to our cube. It's going to rename our cube page, because that's what it is. It's our page. Uh, we're going to go Mo graph, and we're going to grab a Mo spline. So this Mo spline is going to be controlling all the warping of our page. We are going to change the length here to 210 that's the length of our page and if we don't do that now it's going to run into some problems later when we're texturing and things are warping around um, we're going to grab the spline wrap and parent the most spline drag that into the spline section you can see our page is rotated to the uh, axes that our spline was already on so now that we have that we can see how this whole most spline works so you can see we have some different features down here we have angle h uh, angle P and angle B, all very familiar with your rotation settings. Um, but then we have our curve, our bend, and they're all kind of looking weird in our twist. And that's because our page object doesn't have a lot of geometry. So we're just going to go display and turn on our hidden lines. And we're going to maybe put uh, 20 maybe segments in. Um, maybe just three on the Y because it's not a lot of space there. And then 30 as well. And now, if we go back to Mo's spline, we can see that our curve, uh, bend, and twist are deforming that cube very smoothly now, if I might say so myself. Anyway, we're going to zero that out, and we're going to start animating this page turning. So, we kind of want to, you know, you could have a page, and um, we could just use only the P function the angle P and we can just plot in one at zero, one at 60 and put that at like 180 degrees. And yeah, we'll have a, I guess we'll have a page turning, but I mean, what's the point? You know, we're in cinema 4d. We have all these tools. We have all these bends and twists. Let's get into it. So we're going to start off by zeroing out our bend and twist. I'm just going to turn on, auto keyframing so I don't accidentally forget to keyframe anything and we're just going to get a bend and twist at zero as well when the angle is flipped all the way and we know we're at 60 so maybe we'll start at 30. So at 30 our page would be not quite straight up. We want a bit of a bend to it because we want to kind of imitate the whole idea of I don't know the wind acting on the page and the way it's been lifted up so maybe we'll put that at you know, negative 55. And if we see now, it looks a bit nicer. You know, there's a bit more natural to it. Um, but still quite robotic. So maybe I think at the start, instead of bending, you know, concave, we kind of want to go the other way. So we kind of want the page to feel like it's being pulled up. Not negative 20, positive 20. So at frame 10, we've got the positive 20 on the bend. And now, when you view it, it kind of flows up a bit, but it's a bit jerky, which kind of makes sense because the wind is pulling. So that's kind of like the hand pulling it up and then it's bending over. But maybe we need that bend a bit later. A lot of this stuff is kind of eyeballing it and there's no perfect formula because the perfect formula is a simulation and we don't have time to render a simulation. We just have time to animate a really nice really okay looking book it's really okay so with that and i think at the start we also kind of want a twist so it's kind of like you're not grabbing the page from the center of the page if you know what i mean we're grabbing it from the corner because it's just where you get the best grip so we're going to go down a twist and we're going to put in maybe positive five no i grab it from the bottom of the corner negative five you kind of see that's got a bit of a twist now to it kind of like we're lifting it up um Maybe a bit, a bit more extreme. We are animating it. Negative 10. Mm, that kind of looks okay. 
because that's... But we don't kind of want it clipping through the floor. So maybe we will just do negative five and we were okay with the start. So now it's going to come up. It's going to rotate and then it's going to kind of flex a bit too much here. I think maybe negative 55 is a bit too much. We've got negative 40. But yeah, lifting it up, it's rotating down and then it's closing or opening. Cool. So I think that's going to be our basic movement. Yeah, okay. Nice, nice, nice. That's not bad. The first time I did this, it took me way longer to get anything this decent. We might just take this, and I kind of want it to close a bit slower. So we will keyframe in, not the angle, uh, the bend, and we'll just have it a bit more extreme there. So it's kind of, it's going faster there and then slowly. Okay. But it's still looking very robotic. So what we're going to do is jump into, I'm going to put this here because I haven't thought sorted out my recording solution. Um, so if we go to our most blind, we've got a whole bunch of different settings that are activated right now. I kind of want to look at the bend for now, I think. So we see this nice curve and this is kind of our transition between the keyframes. So um, it's automatically smoothing them out. So I think this one, I just wanted it a little bit, um, maybe like that. I don't want it so zeroed. I don't want kind of like reaching these points so smoothly. This is going to take a lot of experimentation. And these are subtle things that you don't really have to necessarily worry about for a quick little animation. But, I mean, this is the art, isn't it? So let's see how this looks. It's still a bit quick, I think, coming between those. I think that's to do with the angle. Because we're just, we're just moving from one to the other. And, oop, hold down one to pull it up. Um, I might just extend that. Let's see whether that looks. So that's a bit too slow now. So maybe just do it a little bit. Just a little bit of smoothness at the end as the page slowly comes down. You know what? I think that's not too bad. We're going to undock that. Get that out of here. And we are going to start assembling our animation. So we now have one animation. It takes 60 seconds. Um, we might put in just a couple. So let's do, we'll just start with 400 second timeline. Okay. And we have at the start, page flip and open on a flat spread. We made a massive mistake. I make it again. I thought this would be quick. I really thought this would be quick. So I'm going to re-record this little bit. So now that we have our one single page animating beautifully, we really need that to be occurring. Oh my God, what am I doing? From right to left. Um, we're going to be needing to texture it before we add anything else because that is just going to save us a lot of time because the texturing setup is not your standard, just drop a selection in. So, first we are going to create a new material. I use PBR materials, everyone textures using different ways. Maybe you use Octane, maybe you don't. And you're just going to grab in a PNG of your first cover page. So you can see I have that dropped in there. It's showing on the little shader ball. And we can just drop this onto the object. Um, ooh, also, I made it editable. Our page is now editable. Uh, shortcut for that is if you just go up there, press C, it'll do it. Anyway, grab this. And we're going to grab our page. And when we select our page, you can see it's toggling to its original rotation rather than the rotation we have that the spline wrap is creating because it's morphing the whole object. And we're needing to select all of these polygons because if we don't and we just drop the page texture onto there, when we play it, it comes over and the texture's on the other side. And we kind of need two different textures for each side of the page because that's how 
your document would be set up if you exported from like InDesign or what have you. So what we're gonna do, grab our page. This is our top of our page. And God, I'm saying page a lot. Uh, we're just gonna quickly select all of these using the polygon select tool. And then once we have them all, what we can do, a bit of magic, uh, we get the side of our timeline. I'm gonna drop the page onto there. So now, if we deselect the object, we play it, you can see the texture is only occurring on one side, which is amazing. Um, we're gonna create a, we're just gonna name this, so we're gonna call this P1 front, and then we're gonna duplicate that and call this one P1 back. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into this, and we're gonna load the second uh, A4 page. So now it's gonna be black page. And so then if we go to this page and we rotate over to the other side with our faces selected, we're just gonna select all of these faces. Um, I've tried using rectangular selection tools, but they just select the opposite side, which is not what you want. You only want this one side selected. And then we're gonna drop our texture onto there. And then if we deselect, play our animation and the texture will be on both sides. You may notice though, this is upside down. So what you need to do, go into your texture on your texture tag and you'll have all these offset U, offset V, uh, U, you know, UVs, maps, I don't know. All you need to do is change the titles U to negative one and change titles V to negative one as well. It's gonna flip it in both directions, mirroring it, and now it'll be displaying correctly. So if we play it, creative coffee, contents. That's all the texturing we're gonna to need to do. When we duplicate these, um, those texture tags are gonna stay on the object, which is gonna save us a bunch of time if I hadn't re-recorded this. Yeah. So we're gonna make six versions of this. That's gonna be our six page turns. And I'm also gonna change these most plain names. Cause if we look at our dope sheet editor, when we duplicate all these, they all call the same. And when we look at our keyframes, it's gonna be very confusing. So we quickly name these P2, P. So now we have a couple of pages loaded in. Um, and all of these animations are gonna be occurring, uh, all occurring on top of each other, which is not what we want. So if we look at this, you can't even tell that there's six pages there because they're all overlapping. What we need to do is we need to offset them in a stack, just like a book would be made, a stack of pages. We're basically replicating the same idea as a book. Oops, so. What we need to do is we're gonna go to P1 and we're gonna turn back on our auto keyframe selection. We're gonna keyframe in where it's current posi Y position is. And then we're gonna do that same for P2. Uh, and we're gonna change that to negative one. So we're gonna move that down one page. We're gonna to go to the P3, put that in negative two. And just go to each page and incrementally lower them one extra unit. Once we have that, cool. So once we have that now, if we play our animation, we can see that they're all in a stack, but when they rotate, the bottom page is still at the bottom. It's not moving in position. To fix this though, we just need to go to keyframe 60, and we're gonna reverse the stack now using our keyframes. So P1 was, oh sorry, P5 was originally at the bottom, and negative five, and now it's on top, which means it's Y value will be zero. Uh, P5, I named P5 and P6 the same. That was really silly, that's confusing. Okay, we'll go down to P5 now, and instead of negative four, we're gonna have negative one. Then we're gonna do the same, and we just wanna reverse that order. So go down in ascending or a descending order. So negative two, negative three, and you can see the stack is starting to reverse now and get it was getting shorter, now it's getting longer again. And when you get to the last page, uh, which is your starting page, it should be negative five, just as the first page at the start, the bottom page is also negative five. So you want the same values. This means now if we play it, we can see the pages co-op and come down, just like they would in an actual book, where the spine holds them in place. Um, now what we want to do is you wanna to go to our dope sheet editor, uh, hold down one to move around, by the way. 
And we're just gonna grab all these and we're just gonna offset them. And then we're gonna grab all of these again and offset them. And this is just offsetting our animation. So it's all animating the same. And of course you can do this with more pages, but you kinda need to decide how many pages you're gonna be animating before you start, just so you can create that stack. Cause uh, you can't, with this technique, it's gonna be hard to add in another page um, just because you'll have to re choose all those values, but it, it's not that too hard. Basically, you just wanna plan out how many you want at the start. So now if we play our animation, we can see, look from this view first, one page comes down and goes to the bottom. The next comes down, stacks on top, next one stacks, keeps going, and from far away, it looks like we're just kind of rotating through the same pages. Now we just need to get into texturing again. So we already have our textures all set up here, but you know, this texture, they don't need to be the same on P2. So what we need to do is we can grab these two textures, control drag, and our P1 front, your P1 front, and your P1 front here. And you can tell which one's being used. So if you click over here and you click on the black or the red, sorry, if you click on the white or the black, you can see down the bottom, a different one is highlighted in orange. So you know these ones on the right are your new ones. So we're gonna call this P2 front and P2 black. Then, all you need to do is open up your P2 front. I'm gonna drag that in on top of the current P2, or P1 front. So we're replacing these pages. Now if you check over here, they're called P2 and P1. Go in here and we're just gonna load in our third page image. So load image, same as always. That texture balls change, and you can see over here the texture balls change. This isn't a great publication to show it on because my pages already alternate between colors. Um, but now that that's in, we can see, we close this, um, we start with our creativity for coffee, and we go to our contents page. And then on the other side of the contents page is our introduction. And of course, we need to texture all these objects. But once you have that done, your animation is pretty much finished. You can set up a camera. It's gonna work from a bunch of different angles. Um, one example I've done is right here. Um, so yeah, that's basically the process. Um, just swap in the pages you need. You can basically set this up for any size you want. Um, one thing you might change is maybe you don't want these pages so thick, one centimeter is um, kind of big. Uh, if you get too thin, you can't use a plane because um, I don't know, I tried using a plane, it didn't work. Um, but if you have a page, try, try and keep it maybe below one centimeter if you want, maybe you want something thinner. Um, I've tried with point one as well and it's worked pretty well. If you get too small though, um, and you have too many faces on your vertice, you, I don't know, things might start to clip or something, so try to avoid those kinds of visual issues. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, thank you for watching the video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. It's been fun. A bit stressful, but yeah, I might make another one. Um, hope you've enjoyed looking at Cinema 4D. Uh, and yeah, cheers. Frickin' bedank. <laughs>